Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Bright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete. Hello, Nikki. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, I just had a Seinfeld flashback. I know, right? <laughs> you're like, yeah. You're my you're my kooky neighbor, and you, <laughs> you knock on the door, and it's hello, Nikki. Hello, we're doing a podcast. Um, <laughs> yes, we are. This is part two of our uh, living with ADHD. Maybe it's part three now. Part three of our living with ADHD series. Oh, this series doth grow. It does. Uh, it, it, <laughs> you know, at some point, we're not even going to say part three, part four. It's just going to be part of the series because. How we really don't know how it's all gonna. Yeah, right. I mean, it's a come part nineteen. Right now. They keep coming in. Yeah. Uh, so we we've got three more interviews we want to talk about today, and then one more that was a little bit longer that is going to run all by its lonesome uh, mm-hmm. coming up. So uh, we're we're very excited to keep this thing rolling. And believe me, uh, this is not the last time we're going to be doing this. So if you're listening to this, thinking, "Hey, I get it now." Maybe I should submit a story and do a little interview. You just, That's right. you know, hold your breath just a little bit. We'll get right back to you because we're going to open this up again at some other time. Very excited about it. Before we uh, before we kick off our, our three stories today, uh, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list. We'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And if this show has ever touched you, head over to Patreon.com slash The ADHD Podcast and become a supporting patron. Patreon is listener-supported podcasting. It allows us to uh, keep growing and investing our time and effort and energy and tools into this show thanks to the direct support of you as members. Uh, to everybody who has uh, already become a supporting patron, these folks are, they could even be watching us record this show live. They get access to uh, the live stream of our recording sessions. They get access to early episodes as we produce them. They get access to our online Discord community and members only channels there. There's a, a thriving community uh, in a Discord and they are getting access to new stuff on the way. So, Patreon. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Uh, we sure appreciate your support. And I have something to add. Let's talk about it. Okay. So I know I've talked about study hall in the past, and we're coming up on a, uh, what would you call it? A promotion. So every 10 weeks, what I do is I give the opportunity for people to purchase basically 10 weeks of study hall for eight weeks of study hall and Mm -hmm. that's happening now and so if you're interested in joining our study hall on thursday afternoons um you're gonna have uh this opportunity for this promotion up until and i'm gonna give you a specific date even though i know that some of you will listen to this much later (laughs) in your lifetime um but for those that that do listen to it now uh the the date for the uh, promotion will end on March 25th. So I just want to throw that out okay. there. Okay. March 25th it is. All right. Uh, get Here in we there, go. get that study hall. All right. Let's talk about uh, let's, let's let's live with ADHD. Who are we going to start with today? We're starting with one of oh, can I just say uh, a ray of, of sunshine. Pe- one of my favorite people. Just joy, even just saying her name. I know. Right? Active, after, active Discord member, Miss Ellie. Ellie, you know, she's so she's telling her story. She's going to tell her story about <laughs> about her experience, her diagnosis, and going through school. And uh, there's, there's just some brilliant little nuggets in here. Um, and uh, I, I just I hope people get a lot out of this. And just smile as you're. If you're not smiling by the end of listening to Ellie. There's something we need to talk about your wiring. There you go. <laughs> so I figured I would talk about how I was diagnosed twice with oh. ADHD, actually. Um, so I was first diagnosed uh, in 2006 when I was 16. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a lot earlier. I I always wish it could have been. I wish it could have been diagnosed earlier uh, because by age like five, I was pretty aware that something was different. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I had, I mostly managed to get by in school just on, I loved books and um, I was 
in, uh, engaged during class, uh, even if I also talked too much during class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so teachers liked me and I managed to get by. Uh, and then by high school, though, um, the homework load, I was in a lot of AP classes. And so the homework load just started to get too much. And I was pulling all nighters all the time. Yeah. And my parents were like, she's clearly trying very, very hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this should be the amount of effort we see her put in. We sh- she should be getting more out of it. Mm-hmm. So my parents didn't know something was up. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if any teacher specifically suggested that I get uh, evaluated. Um, but they were aware too. <laughs> that mm-hmm. Like clearly they, I mean, I got a lot of comments like doesn't work up to full potential. <laughs> Yeah. You know, a pleasure to have in class, but needs to try harder. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then luckily I had one of my best friends, um, Evan, was uh, ADHD as well. Oh, okay. And he had been diagnosed when he was like six or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, typical diagnosis age for a guy. Mm-hmm. And we hung out a lot and he was like, Ellie, trust me, <laughs> you are ADHD, <laughs> your textbook, even if you haven't been diagnosed yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so I largely credit him with kind of spurring, like, we should probably look into this. And there were fewer, uh, online resources then. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, a lot of it was my parents, uh, looked up how to find a doctor to evaluate me. Mm -hmm. I was super nervous. They would say I was just faking it or something. Um, cause even back in, even in 2006, that was kind of a, there was already kind of that, like, is it overdiagnosed? Are people is it real? faking it to yeah. get meds? Yeah. So, uh, but he talked to me for just like an hour mm-hmm. and then was like, yep, you're ADHD. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, okay, apparently it's very obvious to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started on meds. I was on Ritalin or Adderall. I can't remember, mm-hmm. but a low dose, um, relatively speaking. And I didn't really like the side effects on it. Yeah. Um, but I took it through high school and I think it definitely helped. Um, but there wasn't a lot of communication on other ways that I could help, um, uh, treat my ADHD. Like nowadays there's so much focus on diet and yeah. exercise and sleep, time management skills, mm-hmm. sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was definitely still not getting enough sleep in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, part of that, don't get me started on, you know, <laughs> theater schedule and then getting up at, you know, 5 a.m. to go to orchestra practice or something. But yeah, (laughs) uh, it's not conducive. That's for sure. And uh, so I skated by though. I I got, I managed to get by on the meds. Mm -hmm. And then I went to college and I tried to get uh, accommodations, but there wasn't a lot of um, guidance on what I was even supposed to ask for. <laughs> oh, interesting. Even and, at the college level, there yeah. wasn't a lot of information, huh? Yeah, it was still pretty... It's surprising because like by then, there was starting to be more of a thing. So mm-hmm. you'd think they would have caught up, but it was a pretty small college though. Mm-hmm. And I remember I went to um, student support services and I said, like, I have ADHD, I have a diagnosis. I'd like to, you know, what sort of accommodations can I get? what would be most helpful. And they actually said, and I I hope this isn't representative of the entire support services group there. It might have just been I got some student who didn't know any better at the front desk. But they said like, oh, we'll see what we can do. But it's not like you have a real disability like dyslexia. So... Oh, no. And I was just so frustrated and annoyed. Of course you were. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was just like, what (laughs) what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. So I, and then plus there's paperwork involved with getting accommodations. Yes. And so I just kind of let it drop. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, And luckily I had professors that were very understanding. Um, So I had professors that uh, I was always like the last person to finish up my tests. Mm Mm-hmm. But I got good grades on them. So professors would let me stay late <laughs> to finish them. Yeah. And I had professors that were understanding about deadlines. Mm-hmm. Um, so you were getting are... your own accommodations regardless of the student yeah. services. You were yeah. working with Which the is... professors. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I'm really glad I went to a small school um, because it, I had that personal level of attention mm-hmm. that my professors were able to say like, yeah, yeah, I know her and she's in class all the time. Um, you know, she knows her stuff. It just takes her longer to get it down on paper. Yeah. 
Um, so that kind of connection was really vital. And mm-hmm. that definitely improved as I got further along and I was taking a lot of the same professors mm-hmm. in the same subjects um, mm-hmm. as I got more specialized. Um, then I graduated college. Uh, I was pretty good grades. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, you know, definitely... <laughs> Definitely probably lost some years of my life from um, cumulative lack of sleep, but <laughs> yes. but I managed it. And then for some reason, I thought that I didn't need meds in the real world. So I just stopped taking them. Oh, okay. How did yeah. that go for you? How did that work? Not, <laughs> not great. Yeah. Um, some of the early jobs I had were basic enough uh, that it didn't really catch up with me until later. Mm-hmm. Um. But there was one job where uh, it was just really boring for me. Mm-hmm. And so that definitely made it worse. Um, but I yeah. also started working out at a gym all the time. And so oh, I, think I, was, I yeah. think I was compensating. Yes, yes. And uh, so the, but I still, I still hated the job, but uh, mm-hmm. I felt really good being at the gym all the time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we moved and I got a new job in... Mm-hmm. 2005 Mm -hmm. and then i was also planning our wedding for the following year 2005 or 2015 2015 2015 okay 2015 okay because i was gonna say i thought you were 16 in high school in 2006 so it was 2015 (laughs) all right i have so much trouble with the early the early decades of the aughts i'm always like Uh, yeah yeah. i i understand (laughs) Yes. So 2015, yes. I got a new job and we moved. And so there wasn't a gym that was as convenient. So I stopped working out as regularly mm-hmm. and the job was a much better fit and it was really interesting, but it was also much more demanding. And so the cracks started to show a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And then um, I'm sure anyone who's planned weddings uh, with ADHD can attest that it is very stressful. Yes. Um, my mom helped a lot, but she also lived out of state. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the just local, uh, meeting with vendors, day to day stuff fell on me mm-hmm. and I managed and the wedding was beautiful and totally worth it, but mm-hmm. it was definitely just months and months of stress mm-hmm. <laughs> and then combined with work stress. And I know for sure I wasn't, um, taking care of myself. I wasn't, you know, trying to have any sort of work life balance. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you can call it like a mini nervous breakdown or something, but I definitely was not doing well by 2016. Mm -hmm. And so I realized I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have gone off my meds. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, is that what's going on here? Um, and by that point it had been so long since I had been diagnosed, I realized I would have to get diagnosed again, Mm -hmm. um, or at least have someone confirm my diagnosis. Right. Uh, So I looked up a nurse, uh, psychiatric nurse in my area, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a good, um, I find it's, uh, there's often not room to see some of the top um, psychiatrists or, Uh Uh uh, so a psychiatric nurse is often, um, I find she's just as good and um, And she had more room for patients. Right. (laughs) And they take a little bit longer usually, and they can still uh, uh, prescribe the medicine yeah mm-hmm. yeah and so I, and then I, I still had that anxiety that she was gonna think I faked it even though I had been mm-hmm. on meds for like you know 10 years before mm-hmm. um and she was like no you know yeah you seem ADHD mm-hmm. <laughs> so um she had to try me on a couple different types of meds first because uh Vyvanse has that thing where they won't insurance won't cover it until you've proven that other types don't work. Oh, right. Uh-huh. Um, but she was understanding that I had said, I had remembered the um, side effects of the yeah. Ritalin and Adderall. And I was like, I don't think they're the ones for me, mm-hmm. but we tried them for a couple weeks each. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I'm on Vyvanse, mm-hmm. which I know a lot of our community is a big fan of. Yes. Um, yes. And so and then again, though, things didn't magically get easier. <laughs> it definitely helped a lot to start seeing someone about it and mm-hmm. to be back on meds. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, that was really... So 2016 was kind of the start of my current... Um, I hadn't really done a lot of research on ADHD before, despite knowing I had it. <laughs> and oh. uh, 
thanks to the internet and right <laughs> um, just the plethora of ebooks and I found your guys's podcast mm-hmm. <laughs> and all of that combined uh, I now <laughs> I definitely hyper focus on ADHD research. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So I'm pretty knowledgeable now, but even then I still have to like remind myself to put those things into practice on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And now that I'm actually expecting uh, my first kid, Mm -hmm. uh, I had to go off my meds though for that. And so now I'm dealing with like a third, Mm -hmm. (laughs) a third chapter of my story. (laughs) Right. In which I try to figure out, okay, now I really need to look at those other strategies like sleep and diet and exercise yeah, um, yeah. to try to make up for the fact that I'm not on medication. I'm curious to know now that you can't take your meds, you probably can't rely on caffeine all that much uh, yeah. with being pregnant. What are the things that you have found that help you get through the day? Um, I'd say, yeah, I did discover that Meds and caffeine, I was relying way too heavily on, mm-hmm. um, especially the caffeine. <laughs> that mm-hmm. was, <laughs> mm-hmm. I hadn't realized how much of a coping strategy that was for me. Yes. Um, so now, uh, and I can't, you know, I can't pull all nighters. I'm in school right now too. Mm-hmm. I went back to business school, and so I can't pull all nighters to finish my homework. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've, I did get accommodations in grad school though. Oh, great. So that has been a lifesaver. So it is worth the effort. Yes. And they were much more understanding than my undergrad. Isn't that interesting that just a 10 year difference can make, you know, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. There's even um, a a note on all of my uh, syllabi Mm -hmm. um, that says, you know, make sure like we do have disability accommodations if you have something like ADHD or another learning disability. Yeah. So ADHD oh. is actually like the flagship one. Yes. <laughs> that they mentioned. Yes. Oh, that's really good to, um, to know that. Yeah. That, so know, accommodations yeah. and uh, I fidget a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, anyone that's who right. Knows you me know from... a lot of, uh, <laughs> you, you have a lot of fidget toys and ideas, I do, right? I yeah, do. Yeah. I'm a big fan of fidgets, even for adults. Uh-huh. Um, you have to search a little harder to find the ones that are, um, I mean, I, I love, I personally love the ones even that are made for kids and yeah. have glitter and bright colors, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I also have found a lot of fidgets that are, um, you know, quiet enough to use during zoom meetings right. and discreet enough, um, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say those two things, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and, uh, music has always been a good, uh, having some sort of, um, uh, energetic music or white yeah. noise or something while I study. Uh, that's a really good point. Cause yes, I think music for sure can energize you if you're starting to get tired or get distracted, yeah. take a little yeah. break, you know, do a little dance, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you need to do. Well, thank you so much for being here today and for sharing, uh, our, to our listeners a little bit about your experience. And we thank you so much. It was great being here. Like the whole idea of ADHD being the flagship thing, like what she says. Yeah. So it's like the flagship. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's amazing. 10 years later. Oh, yeah. how far we've come. I know. Uh, that it's was crazy. amazing. I, I I love it. I love just watching, you know, Ellie disappeared from the community for a while. She got busy with school and such, but, um, she she's back and I'm so glad that she's back and participating because your insights are fantastic. Definitely connect with Ellie on discord. If you, if you, um, if you jump in there also, I have this, I have a head cannon of her future. Mm-hmm. Cause you, you remember, uh, uh, you've got mail, the man, oh, Ryan, right. yes. Tom uh-huh. Hanks. Yeah. So I have this, this fear for Ellie that, she and she she goes and st- opens a bookstore in New York and becomes the Meg Ryan character, but because she's just good at it, she actually is Tom Hanks all along and ends up running like Barnes and Noble extra wow. large. Yeah, yeah, right. And she brings books back. That's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> she brings she's bringing books, books back. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's Who's next on our list? We've got a we've got a, another great story, and and I think another there are a couple of more like ADHD taglines in the story coming up. Yes, and this is uh, from a listener and a former client, Karen. Outstanding. Shall we just start? Any other yeah. setup? No, let's right, go let's ahead and start. Let's just do it and see what happens. Until 
I started having realizing that most of my friends had ADHD. I, I don't know. Is that my type of person? I'm very attracted to ADHD people. Um, but I always, I had always felt really ashamed and, and very like I was, I was stigmatizing myself because of the ADHD. And, um, I was sort of, you know, just taking all of the, the myths about ADHD or it not being real or, or, or medication vacations Mm -hmm. and, and, and concepts like that and applying them to myself, which, you know, it was, it was a disaster. And then, um, I guess most recently, like when I went and, and did my master's, um, there was a kid and in my class, well, up here. And, um, he, like, he was late for class a couple of times and I thought, oh, you know, mm-hmm. is he okay? But for me, when I'm late, I'm very hard on myself or I was very hard on myself and, and, and I would be like, Oh, you know, they're going to think I don't care. And this, that, and the other. And then, um, I need accountability to get my work done. So I just kind of kept asking everyone like, Oh, I, I study here. Does anyone want to come study? Like I, I have all the books. And, and so, and so this, um, so this guy kept showing up and, you know, we sat down to study together one time and I was like, Oh, he's one of He's like me, I get, I get <laughs> but he, he, he also was a uh, very late diagnosis and I'm, mm. I'm in Scotland and in the UK, it's very hard, um, to get proper treatment and medication. If you have an attentive type, mm-hmm. like I have classic 12 year old boy ADHD. I mm. recently in the pandemic, uh, broke my nose, like crawling on and off uh, like a, a computer chair with wheels because I still have not learned <laughs> don't stand on a chair with wheels. And a week later I fell off a chair with wheels again. Oh no. <laughs> so, um, you know, but, but yeah. if, if you have the inattentive type, it, it's, um, it's harder to get a diagnosis. And, and so, and so I, 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 we worked together. Uh, you were my ADHD coach for, oh, I don't know, maybe two years. And I learned so many skills there. Um, and now like I'm about to finish my master's. I had to take a pause because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but I, I found that, um, that when I was helping my friends, like just teaching them some things, strategies that I learned, like, uh, the alarms and, and most importantly, how to advocate for himself at the school and with doctors and, uh, getting him like the information. Um, I think Dr. Russell Barkley mm-hmm. has like really good things. I was like, don't read this. It's too much. It's not for us, but right. take this to your doctor. Like, um, because he has, uh, my friend had sleep problems and I, I started on melatonin and that had really helped me. And, um, but just learning how to advocate, um, for myself, I didn't do it, but I had the information, but then I started realizing that like, well, you know, my, my friend has been left behind Mm -hmm. because he doesn't have this information. And then I realized it's really important for me to sort of be out as ADHD and tell everyone everywhere and like Mm -hmm. announce it at class and announce it every time I go anywhere, announce it to the bank and say, Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm sorry, but this is not, this Mm -hmm. is not accessible. And it was really difficult for me because I had to face that my ADHD is actually a disability and it, it does hold me back, but my ADHD doesn't hold me back so much as the world is not accommodating, Mm -hmm. you know, just some blanket, uh, accommodations that are cookie cutter that they give everyone doesn't work, Mm -hmm. um, for ADHD. It's about sort of finding out how your ADHD affects you and then articulating that effectively and then insisting, Mm -hmm. Um, that you're accommodated because it's it, it, at least in, in Scotland and in most places in the U S it's your right. And right. you have to stand up for your rights because if I don't stand up for my rights and if I don't teach my friend how to stand up for his, then we're all done. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I think during the pandemic and, and as I was doing my master's, I realized that it was more like, it, it was important to become more active in the ADHD community and to just be more vocal and, and not treat 
it like it was a shame as I had sort of taken on um you know growing up and in my younger uh adulthood mm-hmm. <laughs> and um and so that was that was really um that was really powerful for me and also in in sort of trying to be more helpful and, and trying to like pass on any little tidbits, you know, for my friends, I found that I started taking care of my own ADHD better because I sort of had to walk the talk. Right. Right. Um, and so my, so things got, uh, better for me too. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still like, um, we moved at the end of December and, you know, we, we got sick for two weeks and that sort of like threw off my whole plan of like how we were going to unpack and organize. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's a lot. And, um, and I still don't under, I'm, I am completely time blind. I ha- I don't think I have yet met a person mm-hmm. as time blind as I am. Oh, really? <laughs> does not exist to me at all. Uh, but now that's fine because yeah. I just think, Oh, five minutes, five years. These are the same mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. This is the same. So I have, you know, I, I have alarms and uh, different like, but I have multiple alarms and backup systems and mm-hmm. I, I have a, a digital and an analog system. And although it seemed it, it, I was very resistant to even doing the digital and analog system because it feels like that's taking more time because mm-hmm. it does take more time to set up and it takes more time to implement, but without it, if I wander into a room mm-hmm. and I don't have my phone, but I have my notebook then I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Or if I don't have my notebook, but I have my phone or my watch, then I'm, you know, because I'm losing things and I I get lost in my own house. Mm -hmm. I, every time I walk into a room, I'm like, okay, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. Or, or I'll have a little post-it note with my list of the next objectives. That's good. That's great. (laughs) Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, like a video game and, and sometimes you, you need to check like what quest you're on. Right, right. Well, what a perfect example too of of creating your own accommodations in your own home, you know, of what you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there are post-its everywhere and, and little notepads because I, I do need to write down the next quest mm-hmm. very often, mm-hmm. especially because the house isn't completely organized now. And I am very, very um, affected by my environment. Mm-hmm. So once everything gets um, organized and with the trusty label maker yeah. and, yeah. you know, the the order of operations chore chart is like filled out and everything is systemized. Like Mm -hmm. it's taking a while to set up, but having had set up such a thing before, Mm -hmm. I know Mm -hmm. that my life will become so much easier and manageable. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky that I have put everything, including my master's on pause during this move because I am no longer, uh, Overcommit. Like I, I realize now that I need to do one thing at a time, and if my environment isn't in order, I won't be able to do much else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that has to come first. Yeah, yeah. And 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 as much as I hate routine and systems, it, my brain really needs it because yeah. I do a lot of uh, very cerebral work, mm-hmm. and so by systemizing it. I take all of the executive decision Mm -hmm. out of what room to walk into next or what to eat next or what to wear or, or how to go about like the, the mundanity of being human in the modern world. Mm -hmm. And so that when I do my, uh, my research or, or my writing work, um, I am able to make, I'm able to really shine and, and outperform my peers that are neurotypical because I have accommodated my ADHD in my life yeah. so that it can do, you know, it, the, the, the connections and the, and the jumps that my, my brain can make when it is not stressed out um, from too many executive decisions in the daily life it mm-hmm. is really amazing. Mm-hmm. And that has been really really transformational to, to be able to 
see that actually it isn't random. Like when I am like able to be smart or when I am like completely unable to remember my name, it has mm-hmm. a lot to do with how I'm managing my ADHD. And, and yeah, as you said, if I'm yeah. accommodating myself in my daily life. And, and that means saying no to things that sound really fun. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, 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 you know, it, it's a bit of putting myself through boot camp sometimes and very unhappy, like, nope. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I have an iPhone cause I'm lucky enough to, you know, be able to have one, but it's so I can have the screen time. Right. Which is so awful to undo. Yeah. And then it, it you know, it just shuts off. Right. And the alarm says it goes there, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, Mm -hmm. and I started using a Habitica app because I I really like games and I'm very competitive. And so, you know, I'm getting to, to bed at a bedtime because it's a, it's a thing that I have to check off every day. And then I, and like, I want to win. Right. (laughs) Yeah, so, yeah, that's a great I mean, app. That works for me because I because I know that works for me, and, and it works for. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's not for everyone. It, it really is about trying to figure out like what motivates you, mm-hmm. and um, and also to be flexible with the systems because Hibitica works right now, but it wasn't working six months ago. I'll probably that get, is. you know, I have to, I have to be able to accommodate myself to myself sometimes right right? you have to make some adjustments Mm -hmm. um and so it it is a disability and that was um you know I was raised to you know to be hush hush about that but um you know it's fine and um I find that being able to help my son who also has ADHD and me and teaching him how to advocate for himself and, and my, my friends who are ADHD and attentive type, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's only ever one hyper type in the group, right? <laughs> 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 we can have a few inattentive types, but you know, yeah, I, I didn't get diagnosed until I was uh, in my late teens, I think okay. because I'm female right uh, because looking back through like my my report cards when I was a kid I was always like doesn't stay in class doesn't stay in the seat standing on the chair to, like oh my that God. has wheels on it <laughs> yes and I still like I still have not learned yeah and well you ha- yeah to, you know on the chair do not stand here. Don't stand. Yeah. Well, Karen, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. And and uh, there's so many great nuggets here. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to to talk to our audience and, and sharing your story. Thank you so, so much. No, thank you. I, I, I got so much out of working with you. And it, it was really transformational. I, I I'm going to start my PhD in the fall and I wouldn't wow. even be able to imagine that only after taking the summer to sit down with everyone and figure out how I'm going to organize this data because now I realize that that is like not even going to attempt it until we know how I'm going to organize this piles of data that I already have too much of. That's amazing. Yeah, she is fantastic. <laughs> she and I, is oh, fantastic. She is fantastic. And I have to You're say... Muted. I am so proud of her. Like I listened to her and this is the second time I've, I've listened to it and I'm in awe because this is what I want for my clients, you know, because when she first came to me, she was ashamed of her ADHD and she was really behind in her classes. And the thing that she doesn't say, because she wouldn't say it, is she's an excellent writer. And she's very, very talented. And the work that she does is really good. But what was happening, excellent. But what was happening is she was so far behind that, you know, she was scared to go to the professor and say anything. And, um, and she, she did, she mustered up this courage to advocate for herself. And, you know, I think she was really surprised by the reception that she received because they know she is an excellent 
writer and she turns in exceptional work and and they gave her the extensions that she needed and she graduated and got that degree to move on to the next and it's so inspiring Pete and just to listen to her talk about how she's teaching other people to do this and how she's so like you know, just shouting at the r- rooftop, I have ADHD and it's great. It, we're not great. She's not saying it's great, but she, you know, it, it it's there. And I just, I love it. I love Karen. And I thank her so much for being on the show and uh, talking about that. Well, she's so funny and delightful and easy to listen to. And uh, uh, just those, yeah. the, her stories are fantastic. And again, so relatable. Yes, and of course, I mean, we've, we've all fallen <laughs> off the wheelie chair. Awesome. May not have been a wheelie chair, but we've all fallen off the wheelie chair. Uh, we got one more today, and this one, you got to set this one up because this one is a little bit different. Yes, this is a different one, and I thought it might be a nice one to end, um, although we really aren't ending our series yet because... And today. <laughs> yeah, for today, we're ending it. Uh, so this is an ADHD coach who actually watched our presentation, Pete and I, um, at the ADHD conference. And we, of course, talked about joy. And uh, she was inspired by our uh, presentation, and this is what she had to say about it. Hi, Leslie. Thank you for for joining us uh, on the show today. Uh, Before we get started, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about who you are, what you do? Uh, That would be great. Yes, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Leslie Robbins, and I am an ADHD coach. I'm also um, a mother of a couple of ADDers myself, um, which was the beginning of my journey um, into the coaching world. And um, I live right outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And um, yeah, and I'm coaching families and um, individuals um, right now, kind of the gamut. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. And where can people find you? Oh, they can find me on my website at LeslieRobbinsCoaching.com. Great. Um, Yeah. All right. That'd be a great place to find me. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, there is a very specific reason why I want you on the show today. Uh, You had watched Pete and I at the uh, ADHD International Conference this year, where we talked about joy jars. Uh, And so just to give people a reminder of what joy jars are, we did a presentation, first of all, on just how to create joy and uh, really felt that it was an important topic, especially during uh, this time of kind of chaos in the world and and everything that we've been facing with COVID and 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 everything else, um, and the joy jar started as an idea of having some kind of like mason jar or something that you could decorate and uh, have it be be or basically you could be as creative as you wanted to be. Uh, the the thought was if something brought you joy, you could put it on a piece of paper and you could put it in there. Um, if uh, somebody, uh, it was either an experience or something you noticed or whatever it might be, you could do it in so, so many different ways. Um, but the point was to be able to go back to that joy jar, pick something out of there when you're having a bad day, um, add to it as people, you know, are in your home or you notice something that's that's going really well with one of your kiddos, whatever it might be. And Leslie, you took this, um, you really took this and ran with it. So I did. <laughs> so tell tell us what you did. And 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 I'm curious before I guess you tell us what you did, what inspired you? Like what why did this resonate with you? Oh my goodness. I I'm fascinated with all of the positivity studies that are out there. Um, And it just really resonates with me. I am a glass half full Mm -hmm. kind of a person. I mean, I've always, I always have been. Um, And at one point in, in the presentation that you guys were giving, you started talking about what happens to your body when you feel joy. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. And I was like, I started jotting down some notes and I was like, oh, this is like, and it, at that moment, and that was before you guys even started mentioning anything about like ways what? to implement joy. Right, yeah. Right? And I was like, I started, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, there's something there for me. 
And um, I, at that moment, I think I was really inspired because I started noticing that in myself. Like, oh, this is where I'm feeling it. My heart is swelling. It's like this this hum of energy um, that I'm feeling all kind of throughout. And um, and then when, as you went through the presentation and started talking about these Joy Jar kits, um, or uh, the Joy Jar, I right. thought, oh, I could make it into a kit. Mm-hmm. I could give these away for Christmas. I could give these to clients. I could give this to family and the list kept growing. And I was, I was so excited. I, I have like five pages of notes just from the, the conference presentation. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> I, I moved those aside and I started like drawing out what I wanted these little joy jar kits to look like. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So what did you end up doing? Well, so I, um, I, I thought, well, I was trying to figure out how can I make the, my list was growing, first of all. Right, right. It started with about maybe 12, 15. Mm-hmm. And by the end, I had 70 people on my wow. list that I wanted to. 70 um, people you touched. 70. That's yes. amazing. Yes. So I'm like, this has to be a little cost effective. So you yeah. mentioned Mason Jarrett. I'm like, well, yes, that's a great place to start. And yeah. then I... um yeah, I just started gathering up all different sizes. So nothing yeah. was the same. Everything was a little bit different. And um, I started gathering those things up and I and I wanted it not only to be a, a kit, I wanted them to be able to have everything they needed so they wouldn't have to put anything off to get started. Uh, so, smart. <laughs> yes, yes. So I, I had these little pails that I, I bought that uh-huh. I put little colorful sheets of paper in and pens and um, and everything was combined. And I made a little booklet too. Um, oh. And I took some of the information from Barbara Fredrickson's um, positivity book and mm-hmm. what, you know, what, positivity is basically made up uh, yeah. made up and um i put some examples in there about that and i made this little joy jar um i guess instruction manual yes. and i stuck it into the to the jar and i added a couple of notes myself about why that particular person brought me joy oh my gosh how I, that just gives me chills <laughs> when you just say that like i can't even imagine what what the recipient would feel like so what kind of response did you get well, it was, it was wonderful. And I started actually, um, saving all of the responses. I had handwritten notes, um, mm-hmm. from people and texts and emails and everything. And one of my, my favorite ones was a football coach who said, Oh, this is right up my alley. And I don't know if I would have ever thought about it, you know, right, right. for that to come from him. And then, um, there was another one. It was a, a, one of my clients who's actually been working on really focusing more on, on staying positive mm-hmm. and that type of thing. And she said, you know, this is, this is great because even if I don't put anything in the jar, it's on my desk, it's right out in the open and I can see the colorful, colorful pieces of paper that are in there. And I know there's joy there. Oh, I love that. Uh, so that was so great. There's moments all the time that happen. Mm-hmm. It could be a little blip. It, it mm-hmm. doesn't have to be this big, ma- magnificent moment. Right. It could just be just this, just something. And it's just about being in the present and noticing those those moments of when when your heart does swell and um, you do feel that that energy that comes in and 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 that jar is there for you to just harness it all. Mm-hmm. I love so, it. Yeah. That's great. Thank yeah. you so much. There we go. That was great. That's really powerful. I love it. You know, it is. that one it is person powerful. touched 70. It, it's just, it's just really lovely. And I'm a so manual. She has a joy manual. Like, I know. how awesome is that? <laughs> I know. And the football coach. Come I know, on right? You just people. never know how something like that will touch somebody else. It was really great. Yeah. I really appreciate her sharing that. And I that could be like a motto for the entire episode. You never know. You never you never know. know who has ADHD, who doesn't, who's struggling in their brains, who mm-hmm. doesn't, who's going to fall off the wheelie chair, who doesn't, mm-hmm. or who is going to really um, find an affinity with your idea of joy. Uh, right? It's just beautiful. It's really beautiful. So, um, I love this. I know. Thank it's you, so everybody, fun. for, you, for continuing. Yeah, continuing on this journey and and listening to these stories. I, they're so meaningful for us to hear how you are living with ADHD. So thank you for sharing. It is we we mean that very deeply. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing and being a part of this of this series. 
Uh, until next time, uh, thank you for downloading and listening to the show. Even if you're not contributing to the series, we appreciate your time and attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next time right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast.